Hi guys, my name is Rick Bradbury. I'm a portrait and commercial photographer based in Stockport and in part two for the 3D block prop set videos. I nearly got the name wrong then. Uh, we're going to be shooting a shower gel set. Now, as we can see in the background or the mess in the background, um, stands and all kinds of stuff going on, uh, this is the, the lighting setup and the layout for the product behind us. Um, so we're going to walk through it step by step, um, light by light, just to break it down and what's going on and what's doing what. Um, and I'll take the camera around and uh, show you what we've got going on and show you what's coming in to Lightroom as well. So let's take a look. Okay, next, what we'll have a look at is um, the setup regarding the camera uh, and um, how I'm setting the trigger up as well to fire the lights also, because it's a little bit different than you may expect. Um, so we'll break that down and then we'll start breaking down the set, how the camera's rigged, all the lights, etc. So first up, the trigger and the camera. And we can see on the tether desk here, a ST4 trigger. Um, there we go. So that stays permanently on the tether desk. Really handy because I can input all the power settings I need for any lights that I have on set um, on this trigger without having to touch the camera or go over to, to the set and touch the lights, which when you've got a lot of stands and reflectors and things happening on set, um, it's great because you don't risk knocking anything. Um, so that's nice there. So that lives on the tether station there. And over here, if we pop the lights on over here, um, we'll take a look at the setup on the camera. Okay, so um, over near the set, we're gonna take a look at how I've got things rigged up in terms of the camera, um, and then we'll start to break down the lighting setup. Um, so looking at the camera and the trigger um, over here, uh, so we'll cut to the other camera. Um, how you video guys do this with multiple cameras, I do not know, kudos. Right, um, what we have over here is my camera. Now this is my Canon 5 DSR um, with a 50 millimeter f 1.8 lens on so we're shooting full frame 50 millimeter um, top down on the products which we'll go over to in a minute. And there's another Pixapro ST4 trigger um, on the top there uh, and that is in app mode. Um, so that just takes the power readings from the tether station um, over there. So whatever I dial in over there for the lights, that sends a signal over here when the camera fires, good to go. So I don't have to come over to the camera and touch it, which is great when I've got it boomed over set on a, a little bit less than ideal rig, um, which we'll go over. So um, what we have is underneath this diffusion panel, so a large five-in-one reflector kit. Um, the reflector stuff's removed, so it's just a diffusion scrim, if you will, or panel flown over top. So underneath this and behind these reflectors, um, we can see the C stand set. So in fact, what we'll do, if I pop you guys down there for a moment, I will take these reflector panels away for a moment, just so we can see a little easier from the main camera um, what we've got going on over here. Okay, there we go. So, um, if I come around this side, um, what we have is a he Pixel Pro heavy duty C stand, um, which we can see here. There we go. There's actually two C stands there nested together. That's the beauty of them. And with a counterweight on the back of this one, I'll explain the tennis balls in a moment. And this C stand is my camera boom. Um, it's less than ideal. Like I say, you really want a camera salon stand. I am hunting for one. Uh, and the other C stand here with a super clamp on top is actually um, just bracing the boom. So there's a little bit of play and give in the floor in this studio. So as you move around to so it, just stops the camera bouncing, which can ruin critical focus in some setups. Um, or of course, change the perspective a little bit um, of the camera. Um, so that just braces it there. Um, I'm actually going to pick up some more C stands from Pixar Pro soon because when you're using them to brace this, you run out of C stands. Anyway, right. Um, 
So that is running down to the camera, which is on a um, super clamp on the end of the C-stand here um, and a articulating ball head camera bracket there. Okay, um, if you hear any fan noise, it's probably from the City 300 Pro because I've got the modern lights on at the moment. There we go. So uh, that's how the camera's rigged. Um, the cameras that I'm shooting at, I'm currently shooting into Lightroom or will be doing it in a moment. And you'll see the camera settings shortly in there, so I won't go over them now. Um, so what we'll do next is we'll take a look at the lighting setup and break it down. Um, again, I'll leave these reflectors off just whilst I cover this. We'll see the props as they're laid out and then we'll start to get to shooting. Okay, so coming back onto set, um, let's break this down. So let's take a look at the prop set first. Um, so what we have here, if I can do a top down shot, here we go. I don't know whether I'm gonna get this in focus on this camera, but we'll see. Focus peaking, maybe, there we are. So I've got blue paper and I'm using the 3D block prop set arch with a rectangle block and a stair block. Um, you can see some of the others to one side. I was experimenting uh, before choosing these. Uh, the reason why we're on white perspex is no other reason I had another idea to shoot light from underneath. Didn't work out. I just left it all laid out on here. Um, anyway, now we are set currently on um, some apple boxes that we can see down here. Uh, again, the reason is I'm space limited in this studio, so I wanted this set lower to increase distance from the main light, which we'll go over in a moment. Um, we can also see, if we have a look at some details under here, here we go, if this is in focus, um, I've got little white tack underneath here, foam underneath these bottles, just to raise the shower gel and change the angle of them because we're getting highlights and we're dealing with round bottles, matte black, gold writing, white, gold writing, um, and bottles which don't really sit particularly well. So you have to brace them with white tack um, to stop them rolling round, basically. And um, that's it. Now obviously the block here is at an angle, so I'm having to compensate by using some foam pads cut to shape um, underneath there. Now, for the lighting setup, um, we have, I'll just do a wider shot back here. There we go. We have a large five in one scrim, okay, and two lights going. Now, in terms of light modifiers, there's really only a couple of things happening here. We've got the scrim and diffuser, okay, and we have the um, shadow caster gobo which i think is the flower pattern one here um, to help cast a dappled shadow from the main light and that's really it we're running bare bulb now there's a reason why i'm doing bare bulb i want hard shadows um, crisp shadows um, and you're only going to get that really with a bare bulb setup you can run um, reflectors you'll see some probably on the wall in the corner over there, uh, but you'll still not get as hard a light as you do when you run a point light source bare bulb flash. Okay, you could do the same with a speed light, although the speed light um, Fresnel pattern's not quite as clean. Um, the round head speed light is very good for this, by the way. Um, so that's the GO1, GIO1, I think it's called. Anyway, um, so just to break down this lighting setup, um, up top, um, and I'll cut to the other camera in a moment. We have a Pixar Pro City 600 TTL on a C-stand, um, bare bulb, point light source, which is shooting through the Shadowcaster Gobo, which creates hard shadows, directional shadows, straight down the 3D block prop set set. Is that right? I think so. Um, and creates highlights on the, um, on the product items, the shower gel. Now the City 300, which is underneath the scrim, not quite, yeah, you should be able to see it from there, um, which we can see here, is um, literally providing a point light source to hit the reflectors that are on the side of set and also to give some global illumination, global fill from the diffuser. Now, this diffuser isn't just bouncing the light from the City 300 Pro, 
It's also pulling double duty really, um, because the light from the City 600 up here is a hard light source cast through the Shadow Caster Gobo and also passes through the diffusion scrim. So you get a hard light source with a little bit of a global lift, so kind of a hard with a soft chaser in a way. So the shadows don't go super dark um, or black, they actually stay fairly legible, if you will. So you lift the tonal range and the values up in the shadows. Now, the City 300 Pro also helps with this as well. Now, if we look at the product down here, and we'll see this in pictures also um, coming up, we can see that the bottles are round, in particular, the white and the black one here. It's a matte black with gold writing, and it curves around the edge. So we all know, or we should all know, that light doesn't wrap around. It drives me nuts when people say light wraps. It doesn't, it travels in a straight line. So we need to hit the sides of that product with reflectors or some other light sources so we get the gold labels to light up and the sides of it to light up because point light source, hard shadows, specular, point light source, hard light on a product or the item and then a bit of a global illumination fill but just this scrim by itself isn't enough to lift those edges if we look down here again of the black product down there on the bottles. So we need these reflectors in. Um, they'll catch light from the City 300. Some, of course, from the 600 up there um, to fill in these sides. Um, so what we'll do next, we'll jump into Lightroom and we'll screen capture a couple of shots and just run through in stages. I'll see if I can break down the set to the point where we have um, nothing on set in terms of just the key light with the shadow caster. It's a little difficult to tear down the diffuser without wrecking the set. We'll see what happens. Uh, and obviously putting the reflectors in place as well. So let's head into Lightroom now. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is start shooting some images into Lightroom. Now, with the difficulty in getting the camera perfectly level um, with this camera setup the way that it's boomed, um, quite often um, you end up having to use the alignment functions and tools uh, just to slightly rotate or change the alignment in Lightroom. Sometimes you nail it, um, but it is quite difficult with this because it's not a rigid stand, um, like I said. So there'll be some correction work on that, but let's start breaking down the lighting. Okay guys, so we're gonna jump into Lightroom, uh, which I've screen captured um, using OBS and we're going to do a black frame test first. Now, there's not a whole lot of, of ambient light in here. Um, current camera settings are 160th of a second shutter speed, which is not the max sync speed on my camera, but it's the max safe sync speed I've found with off-brand triggers, so I just default to it. Um, some studio lights won't sync that fast, so you might need to be at 125th or even lower. Um, if you're using older um, studio packs and, and lights, you could well need to be at 100th or even a 60th of a second. Um, so just a heads up regarding that. We're at f14 on the 50 millimeter f1.8 and we are at ISO 160 and current white balance uh, is dialed in manually 5400 Kelvin. Okay, so uh, we have a preset uh, which we're going to pop on there, take a black frame and as we can see, we get nothing, um, pretty much nothing. We can see a small highlight on one of the bottle caps, um, which is gonna be from some of the video lights, but once we get the flashes going, it's not going to be a problem, so I'm not concerned about that. Um, we may hear a little bit of fan noise from the laptop as well, so hopefully um, it won't be too bad um, being picked up. Shh, be quiet, laptop. Right, so what we'll do first is we'll turn the trigger back on and we'll turn the key light on so this is key light on group a which is the city 600 which is in the corner up there and we're currently at half power plus a third now i do just want to quickly say don't pay too much attention to the power settings because there's a couple of factors you don't understand or you don't know in this instance and that's distance 
you don't know the distance between the products and set and the city 600 um, so you can't take a 600 watt light bare bulb half plus a third and get the same exposure uh, so bear that in mind so we're going to fire just that main one now on the set um i have if i just walk over here for a moment i've taken away the reflectors um the scrim a little bit more difficult to remove so i'm going to leave that rigged as it is for the moment um, so I've taken away the reflectors. I'm going to be a little bit dark over here. Hopefully you can still see me. Um, so we're going to be main light only firing through the shadow caster gobo onto the set with the products and the 3D block prop sets, the arch, the blocks and the steps. And we'll see what we get. So if we come back over here, hopefully my camera will focus on me. Here we go. Let's wait the light up. Beep. There it is. And we shall shoot away and we will see coming into Lightroom the effect from the key light so we can see we've got dappled light from that shadow caster gobo uh, and we can see it's casting a nice light on the products we can see highlights um, over the bottles a little bit of fall off towards the end of the frame now if we remove the gobo just to show you what that's doing we'll head over and do that Hopefully, let me make a note of where that was placed, that little hole there. Take that one away. There we go. And we'll do another shot. Boom. Boom. It's a more even illumination. It's a little bit of fall off still. Um, but this is where the City 600 comes in. So it's an interesting light as it is. It's hard shadows. Um, but I prefer breaking it up with that gobo, so we'll put that back in place. So we'll grab this, pop this back in place here, and it was positioned about there on the grip, I believe. And we'll do another test shot just to be sure we've got that right. Here we go. Now, uh, one thing I'm not going to bother doing is doing any kind of correction work in terms of leveling the picture or cropping it, because I will need to do that um, for the final shot, but Lightroom doesn't copy crop settings across oh, the, the presets. That's Adobe for you. Right, so we'll fire again with the gobo just to double check we are good, and we're back to where we were. Okay, so we can see, looking in Lightroom, we've got... Um, highlights here so it's lighting some of the bottles some of the words and text here is lit um but not all of it where it rolls over we can see obviously some of the set in the reflections um, you'd need a rather large silk or scrim covering the set um and then you guys are seeing nothing on the video anyway um, but it starts to go dark in particular on this one side here um, you'll find with some products they're not printed evenly in terms of the labeling and they don't sit completely round, depends how much products or contents is in the bottles, etc. Um, there. But we can see nice graphic shapes, um, graphic shadows provided by the 3D block prop sets as well, um, and nice broken shadow patterns um, from the um, Shadowcaster Gobo set. So, um, what we'll do next is we'll turn on the um, City 300 Pro, which is kind of like the global illumination of the fill, which bounces off that diffusion panel. There we go. So we shall pop that one on, and that's on 1 8th power. Um, we'll pop the modeling lights on for a moment, just so you can easily see in the background, and we'll fire another shot. Boom. Beep. There we go. And as you can see from this shot back to the one with just the one light the city 600 uh, we can see those shadows just lift a little bit and globally the exposure will lift um, as well so just gives it a little bit more pop now i'm not um, applying too many changes here in lightroom still currently sorry if you can hear the laptop fans going um, that is what it is uh, but quite a change that we can see there okay so what we'll start to do now is put in the reflector panels. So I'm going to head over to set first here and we're going to do this back reflector. Okay, 
um, that was placed on here, I believe. So about there. And what this will do, it will just lift this bottom edge a little bit, even out the exposure values um, on this bottom edge of the background or the blue paper. Let's watch my head as I come back. And we'll fire a shot. Boop. So it's just a ever so slightly lifts that bottle and that bottom edge, not massively. Um, I don't actually mind it being brighter up this edge and section. Anyway, we're gonna have some other um, input from the other reflect reflectors coming up, um, which is what we'll put in next. Um, first, I just need to check the time on the camera. Right, one moment. The joys of filming yourself. Okay, so going to the other reflector panels. Um, I have to watch the recording time limit anyway. So um, let's add the other reflector panels in. So we'll do the um, back of the set as it is to camera currently at the moment, um, or if you're looking at the set from the key light um, side, it will be set left. So we'll do those panels. And this is where we get to watch one of the batteries run out because I'm running the modeling lights. We will see, we will see. So that one is just clamped onto a stand there. Again, you can just reuse your light stands um, to clamp things on and that just rests on the floor down there. Um, so we're not utilizing the full bottom reflector. Um, but there we go, see what we get. And boom, flash, ah, and you see it lift that side. Okay, if we go back an image, there we go. We can also see it lift the text on the black bottle in the middle and the gold cap. Um, I'm pointing at the monitor, like you can see um, on that side there. So we'll add in the other reflectors now on the other side, get away from the noisy fans on the laptop. All right, here we go. there and this one just propped up there so blocks your view a little bit so i do apologize for that but uh hey it is what it is reflectors are needed stand that up there right. and we shall fire another one and what we should see is this side of the products and the bottles here and obviously this side of the set will lift a bit in exposure and we should start to see the sides edges of this bottle, a bit of a highlight change here, and some of the gold text being picked up as well. That's the theory. Boom. Beep. And there we are. Okay, um, so we can start to see now the work that the diffusion panel and the scrim is doing at the top of set, giving some global top-down fill. Um, that's from both the key light from the City 600 and of course the City 300 underneath and then the reflector panels um, also as they um, reutilize or recycle some of that light on set and bounce it back in. And we'll take one more shot. In fact, I'm gonna double check focus. Uh, I might just head over to the camera and make sure we are dialed in. I mean, we're shooting currently at f14 50 millimeter full frame so we should be okay however starting to hit realms of diffraction limiting apertures and diffraction within the lens the 51.8 is fine but mm, start to suffer as you stop down past f8 f11 and um, so i'm just going to double check focus so i'm going to come under here now i could actually go to live view in lightroom However, live view in Lightroom doesn't let you manually focus. It's ridiculous. Why bother having live view? Anyway, so let's see. If we punch in, you probably can't see me because I'm behind everything. But here we are. And also, 
the City 300 is blinding me. It's got a very bright modeling light and as you can probably hear, a quite a loud fan. There we go. Sorry. I'm sticking the tongue out the side of my mouth whilst I'm trying to manual focus. Concentration. <laughs> Need it with my eyesight. There we go. Right. Okay. So get back onto camera and we'll grab another shot just to be sure. I'm just going to let the camera settle. Um, I've got the City 300 boomed on a light as well. That'll flex a little bit. So uh, boomed on a stand, I should say. So I'm just going to let things settle on the set. Again, this is the, the downside to having a rig like this. Um, but there we go. Uh, the nice thing about the lights that we're running today, so the City 600 and 300, um, same for the Peakers, they all have very, very good T1 flash duration times. So unless you're running full power on them, which we're not quite there yet, there's plenty of stopping power to stop any kind of movement of a slight move of a camera. Uh, I just don't want to lose focus. Um, there we go. So we'll punch in. And I was probably better focused on the previous one. I think so. Yeah, I would say so. So there we go. So that's everything. All lights firing, all reflectors in place. So I'll just head over on set again. Get away from the noisy laptop. Um, so we have reflector panels on this side, which illuminate this side of the bottles. Okay. Same on the other side as well. It helps fill in the gold text in particular on the center bottle, which is kind of the hero, if you will, of the shot. Um, it just stands out, contrast it's black against light white, light blue. Um, so it stands out well, so it fills in those. Now, the text on the white bottle, when you punch in, you can see it. Obviously, there's a specular highlight hitting there, so I'm not concerned over getting that all red. Now, you may notice on, um, if we jump back into Lightroom, um, on the other bottles, so the clear bottles, um, it's hard really to make out anything on them unless you zoom in um, to read the text there. Um, now, one thing that I did do was I turned the um, bottle caps, if you will, to Bayliss, which is the start of the name. I put the center one as and there, and then um, Harding starting on that one. You're never gonna see the whole title wrapping around on those, um, but just little details like that you can start to pick up on and just position to set yourself apart. Now, we can see obviously reflections in the shiny um, elements of these bottles. Um, shiny things will see anything you have on set, so anything that gets lit, any dark sections of a studio. Um, so ideally, We'd want a big, massive scrim, silks, um, diffusion rolls covering the whole set with a hole for the camera, um, which is something we can do for another time. Problem is with that, it just there's nothing that you can see on set as well. So it's hard to kind of show what's going on um, at that point. And it takes a lot of rigging and I'd need someone with me really to do that, to tear it down and build it stage by stage. Um, so once we're out of lockdown, we'll have a look at that. So any questions, drop them in the comments below. Um, as we can see, the 3D prop block sets, this has gone into a bit of a tutorial on the product shot, but they let you stage a product and build your lighting around a product to tell a story about it. Um, flat layers are great for that because you can lay the product out as a flat lay and bring in other elements or just use graphic shapes like we have with the 3D prop block sets here and um, shadow patterns and lighting patterns with gobos. You can cut holes in card and so forth. Use the shadow casters. There's a load of little things that you can do. Um, change the color um, of the background, for example. So what we'll do is we will, um, let's see, we'll go to that last one there. We'll one star that as the final and we'll do a quick process of this one. So I'm just going to, in Lightroom, we'll just do a little bit of a rotate. There we go, here come the fans. Right. And I'm going to crop this to a four by five, eight by 10. 
which is a medium format aspect ratio. I keep doing this. Oh, medium format, one day, one day. Okay, crop to that. And um, it's leveled off already um, in the preset um, just for any off kilter camera position. Again, it's difficult to rig that to get it right. And then we'll do a quick process of this. And I will send uh, this over to Pixabro to share out on the socials, of course. So we'll go a little bit of contrast. Highlights can snap up a little bit. Um, if you hit J in Lightroom, we can see anything that's clipping. Little sections like that, highlights on bottles with liquid in, I'm not worried about. Oh, by the way, on the bottles, to get any kind of text to show through, um, difficult on this set because we've got white behind it. You'd have to put black card behind it, but you'd instantly see the black card anyway through these bottles. Um, or you could put yellow or gold card behind. Um, but again, top down like this, you'd see it. Whereas if you're shooting through it um, straight on, it's a little, little bit easier to control because you can start to cut the card out of shape. Anyway, um, so what we'll do is we'll continue to process this so we can bump the shadows just a touch, blacks down, and let's go to curves. It's gonna be a very simple work through on this. I'll do a final edit on it separately when I've got a bit more time. I'm not fighting laptop fans. Uh, now I may actually back the highlights off just a little bit. Of course I can go in locally rather than globally and do work on areas. Um, we'll go in and add some texture. Go, let's go plus five on the texture. We'll add a little bit of clarity, not that much clarity, but and a little bit on the dehaze. Back those highlights down just a touch. Now, if we come into the saturation, uh, what do I want to do here? I might bump it just a little bit. And there we go. And we'll do a quick sharpen. Again, a little bit rough and ready this because we're focused on the tutorial side of the video for lighting and looking at the 3D prop block sets. So we'll sharpen that up and we will call that good to go. I really do hope full screen shows up on the screen capture. There we go. And that is the completed shot for now. So thank you very much for watching guys. Um, if you've got any questions, I'm going to head back onto set to get away from the laptop noise. If you've got any questions, um, drop a comment below. Um, hit me up directly by all means. Um, give me some feedback on this video because um, it's obviously a little bit different, a bit more elaborate and involved. So any feedback is more than welcome. Um, take a look at the 3D block prop sets. Um, you can do a load of stuff with them, um, shooting product work, toys, you name it. Um, get your pre-orders in and next video we'll be shooting some Bluetooth book bookshelf speakers and we're going to be painting these um, beforehand. So let us know what colour you want for the speaker shoot. Right, I've got to tidy up now. There we go, part two done. Okay.